In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Polymer components in your Angular 2 application. The way I'm going to do that is by creating just a simple application where we have a list of people that we can filter by their first name. To get started, we're going to go to the Vaughn Elements webpage and to the Get Started section here. The tutorial that we're interested in is under Angular 2 and Angular 2 CLI. The first thing we need to do to get started is to install both Angular CLI and Bower. And we're going to install these globally. Okay, uh, with the command line installed, what we can do is create our new project. So ng new and project name, we're going to call ours demo. Uh, with the project created, uh, we can go into the directory and configure Bower. So Polymer uses Bower for the package management of the components it ships with. Um, we can go with the default settings here. The only thing I'm going to change here is that I'm going to mark mine as a private component. So that looks good. With Bower configured, let's open up our project. The last bit of configuration for Bower is to define where we want to put the actual downloaded file. So let's create a Bower RC file and copy paste the contents from here. So basically the only thing we want to change is we want to put all the assets into the public folder. Okay, uh, with Bower configured, we can now go into our terminal here and install the dependencies that we need. So in our case, the paper input and the bottom grid. Okay. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do in order to use these new components is to go into our source folder here and create a new file. We're going to call it elements.html. In here, uh, we're going to import the two components. With those imported, we're going to go into the index.html and import two things. The first one is the web components polyfill. So this is something that browsers that don't have native support for web components need in order to work correctly. Uh, if you only use Chrome, for instance, you don't need this. The other thing is just import that uh, elements HTML file that we just created. Okay. And the final piece of configuration for index file uh, is to wrap the bootstrapping here in a web components ready event listener. So that way we can ensure that the components that we're using have been bootstrapped before we try to start the system. Okay, uh, let's try to run this right now and see that we're on the right track. So we can go back to our command line here and type in ng serve. This will start a little local server and also listen for any changes in our code so we don't have to keep restarting or refreshing our browser. Okay, uh, we get a little demo works text here. So it seems like everything is working the way we want it to. The next step is to install the Vaadin Angular 2 Polymer directive so that we can interact with these in a normal Angular 2 manner. Uh, with that installed, we are able to go back to our code. In order to use the directive that we just installed, we need to do a little bit of configuration. So if we go back to the tutorial that we were looking at earlier, uh, scroll down a little bit here, uh, you can see that we need to make some changes to our system config. Uh, namely, we need to configure the paths and the packages. So we can just go ahead and copy paste these into our system config file. We 
we also need to go into the command line build file here and configure that. So we can just go ahead and copy this text and go back into our command line file here and save that. So with that configuration in place, uh, we're ready to actually start using the elements that we installed. So uh, let's go into our application folder here uh, to the app component. The first thing we need to do in order to use these is import the actual Polymer element directive. With the directive imported, we need to go and define it here in our component. And the way this works is that for every Polymer component that we want to use, we just define a Polymer element and pass in the name of the element that we want to use. In our case, we want to use the paper input and the bottom grid. So with the directives declared, uh, we can go into our template file here and actually add the components to our UI. And if you remember, this is going to be the filter input, so we can put in a little label like filter by first name. We also want to have a grid where we display the actual people that we're filtering on. And here you can see that I'm using Angular 2 data binding to bind to an array of people. Of course, we haven't, uh, we haven't defined that yet, but we're going to get to that in just a second. The first thing I want to do here is uh, go into our CSS file and just uh, make, make it look a little bit nicer. So we can create a selector for the host element, which is the component itself, and change the font here. OK, and uh, just to make sure that we're on the right track, let's go back into our console here and type ng-serve. So if we go back to our demo here, uh, we can see that we have we have the paper input here. We can type in stuff. We have the columns of our grid, but of course we don't have any, any content yet since we haven't uh, defined how that works. Uh, so let's do that next. We're going to go into the demo component again. Uh, we will then import HTTP providers and HTTP from Angular uh, as well as RxJS. Uh, the next thing we need to do is define the provider here in our component. Providers, this is just an array, and we'll include the HTTP providers that we just imported. We also need to do a constructor where we can inject the HTTP service. And here in the constructor, what we want to do is call a method that actually goes and fetches those people. We'll call that get people. Of course, we haven't implemented that yet, so let's go ahead and do that. So get people, uh, what it does is it uses HTTP and does a get request. And here I'm using a demo data service that I wrote a while back to just fetch a list of people. The response here is an observable. So what we want to do is map over that to get the actual content that we want. In this case, let's do map. So we uh, map on the responses. And out of each response, we want to call JSON to get the actual JSON object and the people that we're looking for are in the result uh, array of that. So with the map in place, the only thing that we need to do is actually subscribe to this as it's an observer. It's not going to emit any events before we start subscribing to it. And this is going to emit the array of people. And what we want to do with that is just store that into an array. Since we're using TypeScript, it's going to complain that we haven't defined people here. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, people will be an array of person objects, and we will initialize that to just an empty array. 
And of course, we need to tell uh, the compiler what a person is. So we're just going to inline this quickly here. So a person is just a class that has a few attributes, first name, last name, email. OK, um, so I'm saving, saving the file here. And if we go into our browser now, uh, you can see that the HTTP request worked. And if you remember, in our template, we bound to the person array. So you can see that it already populated populated the grid here. Of course, what it doesn't do yet is filter by anything. So uh, let's go ahead and implement the filtering here. The way we do that is to go into our template here. And we're going to put in a listener for the key up event. And on every key up, what we want to do is call filter people. And we'll need to pass in the actual uh, key up event so that we can get to the text that we're filtering on. So let's go into our file here and let's implement the filter people method. And this uh, takes in the event. So what we want to do first is figure out what text we're actually filtering on. So we'll call that filter text and we can get that through the event. And I'm going to call to lowercase here just so that it's easier to do the comparison. So now that we know what text we're filtering on, the next thing is actually taking the array of people and do the actual filtering. So we're filtering over the array of people and they're of type person. So we can put in the typing here. And what we want to check then is that either if we have a empty filter text, uh, we want to show all of them, or then we want to make sure that the text is actually contained in the first name attribute of the person. So p dot first name dot to lowercase dot index of the filter text should be larger than negative one. Save that. Uh, of course, this is not going to work as it is right now, since we're just filtering the array here, but we're not doing anything with the filtered content. So uh, let's save that into another array called, uh, say, filtered people. And we need to define that array. Let's call filtered people like that. Uh, we need to go into our template here and bind to the new filtered people array like that. And of course, there's a tiny problem here now in that uh, before we actually filter anything, uh, we're not going to see anything. And that's just because we when we initialize the people array, we never initialize the filtered people array. So we can just uh, inline this here. So, so if we go into the demo here again, uh, this should work now. So if we want to search for Sophie, uh, you can see that the filtering works the way you would expect it to. So um, I hope you learned a little bit about how you can use Polymer components in your Angular 2 application. If you're interested to learn more, uh, uh, go over to the Polymer project website. Uh, here you can see both tutorials on how to use Polymer components in general. And probably more interestingly, you can browse the element catalog. So here you can find a ton of different components, basically the entire reference implementation of material design for the web, a bunch of Google web components, things like Google Maps and Sheets and so on. Uh, also check out Bodden Elements. So this is a collection of components that are meant to work seamlessly together with Polymer components and offer both Polymer and Angular API. So we have the grid that we just tried out. We have a combo box, upload, date picker, a bunch of charts, and so on. For each of these, you can go in and actually see uh, the code that you need in either Polymer or Angular 2. And there you have it. Thanks for watching.